So one of my favourite B-movie directors of recent years has been Perry Reginald Teo. Actually did a pretty good job on some horror movies that I've reviewed here. Uh, Ghost Hunters, The Curse of Sleeping Beauty and even The Ascent I all enjoyed. So here he is turning his hand to a kind of Fast and Furious kind of star movie in Fast Vengeance which is actually the final completed film from the late rapper DMX. I believe there was another movie that was part way through production when he passed away. Uh, but this one was the last one, as far as I'm aware, that was actually completed before his passing. So I've always thought Perry Reginald Teo, who is the director and uh, kind of writer editor as well, reminds me a little bit of a kind of a low budget James Wan in his kind of directorial style. And obviously James Wan started in the, in the kind of horror genre and has then gone on to do kind of uh, other movies as well. So Perry Reginald Teo is kind of following in his footsteps, albeit in a kind of a B-movie style kind of comparison. So Fast Vengeance is essentially a kind of a mockbuster, uh, obviously coming out to, I would assume, to uh, coincide with the latest Fast and Furious movie. This one is more about street racing than the actual Fast and Furious movies are now, but this one is actually to do with like motorcycles rather than kind of cars. So it, it features this, this character called Shen Long, who is the the brother of someone that was murdered by this street this street gang called um, the Midnight Squad, and they are led by Cobra. Yes, Cobra. And because uh, he's basically kind of follow up in, following up on the his his brother's murder, and goes through a variety of different kind of like people. We see a few famous faces. We've obviously got DMX as I've mentioned, who plays kind of like the police captain. You've got Jeff Farhey. Uh, you've got Bai Ling as well. So there's a couple of kind of familiar, uh, albeit low budget kind of B movie actors here. And ultimately, it, it's a mix between kind of racing and kind of a martial arts movie with kind of like an investigation with our main character trying to learn the ropes of street racing whilst trying to track down uh, his, his brother's murderer and we've got all the kind of like the police maybe involved we've got the kind of the triads that may be involved it's kind of this gang of, of uh, bikers for example what will happen well you're gonna have to watch the movie to find out so let's discuss so as i've mentioned um I'd say this is one of my favourite uh, B-movie directors. And how does he fare in a, kind of a, a non-horror property? You can definitely see the kind of the, the gleeful playfulness that this director, that one of the things I quite enjoy in his directorial style. This is kind of like a 14-year-old's dream if they kind of into kind of street racing. If, if you were like 14 when the Fast and Furious movies came out and you like B-movies, then this may be you know, a kind of a, a nostalgia trip, or if you're currently 14, maybe. You know, you've got sexy girls, you've got martial arts fights, you've got street racing. It's all in here. So there's kind of quite a lot going on if you are into somewhat juvenile kind of, and, what you know, we've got like almost a cyberpunk kind of style. It's not a science fiction movie, but we have these kind of street racers, and they're all done up in kind of like over the top kind of like gear and things like this with neon wigs and kind of face paint and then a lot. So they kind of all look very kind of over the top, almost a, a, a kind of cyberpunk feel to it, despite it not actually being, you know, any type of science fiction. So aesthetically, it's quite um, 90s cool. It's kind of cool when The Matrix came out. And again, we are now in 2021, so it is obviously moved on a little bit from there. But if you still think kind of like The Matrix kind of style was cool, then this one may be for you. I will say there are some genuinely good kind of fight scenes here. They're a little bit over edited at times, I will say, but nonetheless, there's some very impressive sort of stuff going on here. And um, one thing maybe that, that, that the Fast and Furious has less of is martial arts fights. Whilst this, the majority of the cast here, or a good portion of them, are Asian. Perry Reginald Tio also is Asian. So, you know, he's got lots of representation here from the Asian community, and that's it's obviously, uh, you know, we have quite a lot of kind of martial arts involved. It is, there's some good examples of uh, some pretty kind of effective and breathtaking fight sequences here. Um, but I have to be honest with you, this film is uh, not good. Um, 
So let's talk about the acting first of all. Have you ever seen Mortal Kombat Annihilation? If the answer is yes, you'll know that that movie is lambasted for some of the kind of the crappy acting in that film. This movie reminds me of that level of acting. The acting in this movie is awful, unfortunately, from the vast majority of the cast. Uh, even some of our kind of more experienced actors, Byling, for example, I think is terrible here. Uh, but she has done some good stuff. Obviously, she was in The Crow. It's fantastic in that, along with other things. But here, everyone is like turned up to 11, completely over the top, screaming their lines, very unconvincing. Our main, um, our main actor... It looks like he's on some type of uh, like cocaine habit. He's kind of really sort of twitchy and always seems to be like, you know, looking like he's need, needing his next fix. Just twitching all over the place. Um, the, the acting here is, and the, and the lines, the, the dialogue is absolutely terrible. Now, I'll go back to what I said before. This kind of, may, you may like it if you have that kind of that 14-year-old mentality or if you are a kind of, you know... Um, that kind of age group because they, that's the kind of the dialogue that it feels like a 14 has 14 year old has written it's terrible and all the actors here are just like that their, their costuming is just it just is it gets a little bit silly considering this is not meant to be taking place in a science fiction cyberpunk kind of you know future or anything like that these people are just kind of like a little bit dialed up too much and, and just seem like cartoon sort of characters. The actual motorcycle racing is a little bit lame. Um, none of the kind of the thrills of, of obviously a larger budget movie. I, as much as I thought the martial arts sequences were quite done, maybe a little bit overrated, the bike sequences are quite poor and you never really get a sense of genuine kind of speed or anything like that. Um, you know, it just isn't there. Uh, the plot itself is massively predictable uh, with with massive character cliches and um, and it's just ultimately not particularly interesting. This movie, unfortunately, um, says to me at least that Perry Reginald Teo's strength may be in horror movies and maybe, you know, that's maybe we should, we should go back to it. Well, now he's got another one coming out. Uh, quite soon, which I'll look forward to, but this one certainly uh, was not a good movie, um, unless you kind of are really into that very kind of like, as I say, 90s cool or just very juvenile kind of style uh, or, or of kind of B movie that, that a 14 year old would think would be cool. Uh, I didn't think it was cool, I thought it was trashy. Um, and this movie, uh, as such, will get a three out of ten for me. Sadly, um, you know, I'll still be a fan of Perry Reginald Teo. He's one of my favourite B movie directors. But this, unfortunately, uh, yeah, not one of his better movies. Three out of ten. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.